Uh, we're going to be adding to this plugin uh, you know, considerably uh, over the next year. This is what's available today. Uh, in addition, we have uh, a uh, PhysX toolbar. We've added over here to, le to the left-hand side so that artists really feel at, at home in the environment. It, it's very natural to the, the 3D Studio Max paradigm. Uh, so, what we have here is a character from an upcoming game title. Um, hasn't been announced yet, so I'm not, not at liberty to say exactly what title. Um, but uh, we've had our artists actually come in and add clothing to this character. I can come back and play kind of the, the basic motion capture uh, you know, for this particular game character. You can see how the jacket is very rigid, not very lifelike. So I can go back and I'm going to actually play this back with PhysX clothing. And you can see the jacket is much more lifelike, much more realistic. It's going to create a much more compelling game experience. And you can see it's all happening right here within 3D Studio Max. The artist is doing this without any involvement from the programmer at all. They can go, um, go in and tweak values, really change things to be exactly how they want them to be. So what I'm going to do quickly is show you what the artist goes through to actually create content like this. So, loading up the exact same character without Apex clothing on it. I'm going to play back here. You can see, again, uh, a very static, uh, static character in terms of clothing. <coughs> so, the first thing I'm going to do is, is turn this jacket into clothing. Uh, select it, and I'm just going to go to Physx, Apex clothing, create clothing. You can see what we, what we see here now is the physical mesh represented. So we have the graphical mesh that was created by the artist and the, the physical mesh that has been created by Apex Clothing. I can go and play my simulation and you can see it's suddenly turned into a you know, very dynamic clothing but it's not staying where we want it to stay. Mainly this is because you know, the artist didn't actually create a model back here where he didn't, didn't expect people to see it, really optimizing you know, the game character for the game. So we have some tricks we have that allow us to uh, you know, take care of, uh, of this type of situation. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually turn off the pants here because this makes it easier to create this jacket. And then I'm going to go in here and turn off this physical mesh wire uh, just because it kind of gets in the way of, of painting. So the first thing I'm going to do is set the max distance that each clothing particle is allowed to use, er, allowed to move. I'm going to turn on this visualizer. This visualizer shows you how far each clothing particle is allowed to move. <coughs> on the shoulders up here, we don't want it to move that far because we want it to stay on its shoulders. So I'm going to come in here and just flood all of these values uh, with zero. So that's it's set to zero. If I go and play this back, again, we're, we're back to a very uh, static uh, clothing environment. So, then uh, using the, the native tools in 3D Studio Max that artists are, are really used to using, I'm going to paint the values on here that uh, I, want it to, I want it to be. So this is a paintbrush. I'm going to select a, a flat paintbrush for painting. I'm going to choose a paintbrush of about uh, 10 centimeters that allows me to, to paint things quickly. And I'm going to paint the value of about 20 centimeters because that's really how I want the how far I want the bottom of this clothing to move. Uh, I'll come in here and select paint, and then so I entered one twenty. How did that happen? Uh, and that's still not taking effect. Well, that's interesting. I've never seen this before. Let's try 20 again. Maybe it wants me to have a larger range here, so let's try that. There we go. Uh, Alright, so now <coughs> I'm going to go in here and paint once again. Value of about 20 centimeters. And you can see how easy it is for the artist to really just come and paint the values he wants, you know, to really make this clothing dynamic. We'll move up here a little bit. Now in the back here, since we since this back wasn't modeled very well, we don't want the clothing to move that much. So I'm actually going to uh, come back in here, 
paint this to a value of about 10 centimeters, uh, limiting the movement back here. And then to get really lifelike clothing, I'm actually going to smooth these values out a little bit. So we have this tool here where I can just come and smooth the various max distance properties that are here. You can even do things like this cost. Yeah, you, you, you totally could. I'm not sure exactly what that would do on this model, but um, we, yeah, we could paint anywhere to have it have it move any any amount we want. So that's that's fairly realistic. Uh, we'll go here and bring the pants back and then play this real quickly. You can see we have we have a fairly nice clothing simulation, but again, it's falling through his pants right here. And we really don't want to uh, don't want that to happen. So the next step is we have something that we call the backstop, and uh, this is also known as, as animation collision. So what this is, it, it tells the clothing simulator not to allow the clothing particles to move past the animated bits of the clothing. So I can just select. Oh, I'm still painting. I can just select here. Uh, I'm going to switch to my backstop. And I'm just going to go ahead and flood this with zero. Um, I'm going to smooth it with zero. Let's try it again. Flood it with zero. So that's going to tell essentially the various clothing particles not to move through the pants as we were seeing them before. So we fixed that problem fairly quickly. You can see, if you look closely, the jacket is kind of penetrating his pants right there. And we really don't want the clothing to, to penetrate other parts of the model. So what we can we can do quickly. Uh, again, this is a this is this character has been rigged with bones and and joints, uh, you know, to allow the um, uh, the character animation. So I can actually go in here and grab one of those bones and use that as a collision volume for the clothing. So I'm going to find my left leg up and right leg up. And we're going to change the wireframe so we can see these. See these two orange blocks in here? These are the uh, these are the collision volumes generated from the bones. These are way too small for what we want to collide against. So I'm actually going to go in here and select this one and quickly scale the radius of that one up. Change the height a bit. And then I'm just going to oops, that's not what I want. There we go, and then I'm just going to move this back a little bit up here, so it's um, closer to that uh, to that jacket. And we'll do the same thing for the left leg here, uh, bring up the radius, scaling the height. Now we have other ways of setting up collision volumes. Uh, we can create custom uh, collision volumes. We can generate it uh, different ways. But now you see when I go back here and select this, you can see it's showing the various collision volumes that the jacket will be collided, collided against. And now when I play back the clothing simulation, the jacket should stay out of the pants uh, because we've, we've said, we've told it not to penetrate through that part. So I didn't quite, I didn't quite get it perfect. There's a little, little penetration going on there, but uh, you get the basic idea. This clothing's a little stretchy right now, a little bouncy. There's various properties we can set on the, on the property, to, uh, various properties we can set on the clothing to, uh, to avoid that, to really tune the clothing. Uh, it ships with some uh, preset cl uh, clothing types. You can create your own, uh, changing the density, uh, the, the stretchiness of the clothing, um, uh, various and subject properties that, that really allow you to simulate most types of, uh, of clothing. Um, so that's the basic demo. Just want to give you guys an idea of what type of investment NVIDIA is, is making into these tools and how we're really looking to, to empower the artist in, in a way that was never before possible. So any, 